When I first met Alejandro, he was really struggling with self-esteem, his identity as a male, and he would cover it up by just basically kind of being a class clown, not taking anything serious. Other kids around me, they literally didn't care. They'd throw paper balls out the window, throw airplanes out the window, throw stuff at each other. And then before I actually got into the loop where I did those bad things. He really didn't have any significant males in his life, and he's in a household full of predominantly females. So mom and Alejandro were both very excited that I was going to come into his life as a counselor and as a male who would be able to spend some quality and significant time with him. When I met Perla, she was super quiet. She seemed kind of sad. There was a lot going on at home. Her mom was ill, and she was very angry about the things that were happening. Well, at that time, I was like stressed and like I shut people out. I struggled with focusing on my work and dealing with my surroundings. I had maybe one goal of being like more focused and getting my grades up because that's what mostly what my parents and everyone else would tell me, get your grades up or you'll go back to sixth grade. <laughs> so I was called to the school one day. Perla was having a really rough day and we just sat in the office and talked for about two hours and she opened up to me and told me about everything going on in her life and what she's thinking and feeling. We talked about her hopes and dreams. Like we should have a lot of strong talks about like how I can improve on like doing better on tests and stuff. I can do better on focusing on my work or how I can get more A's. I just saw this incredible young woman who had a lot of anger but also was just really willing to work on herself and to better herself every day and that was a breakthrough moment for her. I remember a day that really stuck out with me and my relationship with Alejandro. I was here in school visiting him and he was coming around the corner from his class and he had a book in his hand. And it feels like, that's a big book, why are you reading it? I'm like, because I'm trying to read a million words this year. He's like, well, you should read it. I really encourage you that you should finish it. I was really proud because, again, Alejandro was someone who really wasn't fond of reading previously. That, for me, was definitely his breakthrough moment. I think a lot of these moments come out of obstacles that they experience in their lives and by overcoming things, even if it's something small, it shows them that they, they can do this. Every time Perla overcomes an obstacle, these little breakthrough moments show her that if she did it once, she can do it again. I think Kate sees a lot in me because if I feel low on myself, then she gave me like these notes that says I'm beautiful or like just like things that I say to myself. family has been through a lot of challenges, but just the fact that Alejandro and his sister Perla both have educational counselors and have the extra support that a lot, maybe a lot of the kids don't have is going to really, I think, just push them on to being very successful in the future. I don't even know if I can put into words why I do this job. Just to be able to walk alongside Perla and all the young women that I work with and see their hopes and dreams come to fruition, even in little ways. It's so amazing to be able to work with them every day. Without Kate or Denver Kids, I would probably have not as much dreams as I have right now. Because now that she came, I have like a lot more dreams that I want to accomplish. She's like a person that I can talk to before anybody else. And I think other kids should have that because some kids don't actually have that opportunity to just have a great counselor <laughs> like I do.